In this video episode, I'm going to use C++ Builder to create a simple FireMonkey 3D application. Let's start from a wizard. I'm going to create a new multi-device C++ application. I'm going to go for a blank application uh, template. And I'm going, uh, as the first thing, to save all the files in the project. I'm going to create a new folder, uh, call it fmx3dcpp, and inside of the this folder I'm going to keep the default names unit1 is fine, uh, the project1 PACH1 is fine and the project name will be FMX uh, 3D uh, FMX 3D and CPP. Okay, uh, so I'm going the first uh, thing to do is to add a T viewport component to the form. So I'm going to uh, align this uh, component uh, to the to the client so it occupies the whole screen and I'm going to uh, add to it uh, a shape component a 3D shape component so in my case it's going to be a sphere component uh, so the goal of this presentation of this small video episode is to create a, a 3D interactive visualization so I have a sphere uh, I'm going to add a texture to it I make it to uh, spin and also I'm going to add some interactivity so when the user clicks on the uh, sphere it's going to go uh, closer uh, or deeper into the uh, screen okay so the first thing to do is to add uh, a texture to my sphere uh, so in the materials uh, category there are three different uh, material components I'm going a t-texture uh, material source component uh, I'm going to load uh, texture to it so uh, inside of the uh, I'm going to use inside of this uh, component uh, a free for commercial use a public domain flowers image um, from the this um, open uh, source um, website uh, so I'm going I have already uh, downloaded this uh, image locally I can now edit the texture property and uh, load into this component uh, my picture so flower power 91 click on OK so now the texture is already in the component that now I need to connect the sphere with a, a texture so every uh, shape 3d component has a material source property you can use to attach any of the material components so now my a sphere has a nice uh, flower texture but it's very small so I'm going to make it bigger so I'm going to change the scale X uh, property to 10 scale Y property to 10 and scale Z property to 10 so now my sphere is uh, 10 times bigger I'm also going to move the sphere a little bit uh, closer uh, to the user so I'm going to change the Z property uh, to minus 3 uh, so the sphere appears uh, closer. In FireMonkey 3D the coordinate system is that the X uh, the, um, coordinate goes to the right of the screen, Y coordinate goes down to the screen and the Z coordinate go into the screen. So making Z negative move the, uh, anything uh, closer uh, to the user. So now the next thing to do is to actually add some animation. I'm going to add an T animate float component to my sphere. Uh, so now it's part uh, of the sphere so it belongs to the sphere so if I open the property name uh, property I can select a, a property I want to animate so that's going to be rotation angle I'm going to change duration to two seconds make it enabled make it a uh, loop and also change the stop value to 360 so now if I save this project again and run it I should see uh, my sphere uh, nicely uh, spinning and that's exactly what I wanted to achieve. The next thing is to add to some interactivity. I'm going to add an on-click event. So this on-click event uh, I'm going to use to uh, to animate the uh, sphere position Z. So if the sphere 1 uh, property position and sub property Z is actually less than zero that I'm going to use the special T animator class that has a static uh, uh, class a static uh, method called uh, animate float I need to specify uh, which component uh, I want to uh, uh, animate I'm going to specify the name of the property I want to uh, 
animate and I'm going to make it free so it goes uh, further from the user and uh, if it's already further from the user I'm going to do the opposite and I'm going to uh, do animate to minus three okay so now I can just save my project run it and now I've got I have got an animate animated uh, sphere uh, with some interactivity so on desktop platform it will uh, respond to click events and on mobile platforms it will respond to touch events thank you very much for watching